For RCR Wireless News, my name is Sean Kinney, and I'm here with Dr. Bijan Jabari at the IEEE Globecom event in Washington, D.C. Dr. Jabari, you're the general chair of the event, and the theme, which we've spoken about before, really is a powerful message, and that is freedom through communications. Can you elaborate a little bit on how communications enables freedom? Uh, yes, absolutely. The idea, in fact, is the communication engineers in fact, who are part of the IEEE Communication Society, in fact, that's what Communication Society presents, uh, basically have been working uh, on technologies that enables the, the uh, communications, and communication, in fact, uh, basically provides the freedom. That is, enables people to communicate, exchange ideas, and in this way, we move towards democracy. And it, during the event, we've seen a, a wide range of uh, keynote presentations, plenary panels, industry tracks, symposia, tutorials, paper presentations. We've got a really comprehensive look at the state of the telecommunications industry right now. And the vast majority of the discussion here has been around 5G and what needs to happen between now and when we see a standard emerge and then when we see commercialization. Could you kind of sum up some of the operative issues that have been addressed relative to 5G? Yes, absolutely. Uh, actually, f thank you so much for bringing that issue up. I, the, in the IEEE Globecom 2016, we have tried to have a balanced program. We have had industry program participating uh, quite actively. Uh, we had uh, basically government and uh, uh, and non-profit organizations take, take part in it, as well as uh, the basic uh, ingredient of the uh, IEEE Globecom conference, uh, or ICC, which is basically academia and academia participating. So the idea, in fact, is try to discuss from uh, basic research and the environment that can be provided or facilitated through government and also taken, in fact, through non-profit organizations such as standardization and so forth. So bring them all together and move forward. So as you saw, 5G is an important component of discussion in, the, uh, in this, in this uh, conference. Uh, however, there were other things. In fact, IoT was quite big. There were activities related to Wi-Fi, in fact, was quite big. Things related to uh, wireline, for example, SDN or fiber optics, in fact, was quite uh, uh, prevalent, in fact, in this conference. Now, obviously, with respect to 5G, we are making progress. We are, we are addressing how does 5G look like? What are the killer applications? In fact, how, the, how does AI, in fact, play a role in it? Uh, how do we do in terms of a spectrum? For example, the spectrum, a large amount of spectrum would be useful, in fact, in uh, 5G or not. But there are other technologies, like, for example, massive MIMO, what role it's going to play, and so forth. So all of these, in fact, are being discussed and uh, brainstormed so that to pave the way for ultimate technologies that will be incorporated in 5G and alike, basically. I think you made a, a very salient point in there, uh, and that's the importance of uh, including government stakeholders mm -hmm. in the discussion. The telecommunications industry by itself will, will never achieve 5G if it does not have the support of the, the government, and I, I think that was uh, on display here. Mm -hmm. To use the, the U.S. as an example, uh, Last year, the FCC opened up almost 11 gigahertz of, of high band spectrum, ostensibly for use with 5G. Do you feel like uh, this sort of direction will help innovation happen more quickly? I think it's, uh, that is really fundamental to uh, growth of the technology. Uh, I believe the government participation in uh, proactively is extremely important, and we are fortunate to see that this has continued. And of course, that addresses the uh, one aspect. However, there are technologies that provide more efficiencies as well. So we should also look at that to see how else we can address the problems of 5G. Certainly the amount of traffic that will be flowing over 5G network would be perhaps monumental. So we need, in fact, to uh, not really make incremental uh, taking incremental steps, 
but we really need, need, need to take gigantic steps to basically bring that high data rate, the low latency, and of course, more importantly, reliability to the networks. And that really does require a, a major transformation of our, our networks that were designed really to provide reliable voice service. And now, when you think of the range of applications that 5G will make real, there's a lot of work to be done. There's a lot of, certainly there's a lot of work to be done from every aspect. For example, you can imagine that if your handset it is uh, basically transmitting at the, uh, at the rate of, uh, let's say, uh, order of gigabit per second. You know, the amount of heat dissipation and uh, the device becoming very hot, in fact, would be an issue, correct, at that, at that speed. Also, there will be issues, for example, if you are moving to high frequencies, what sort of effect it will have on the body, for example. Those needs to be addressed as well. So really, there's a plethora of issues that needs to be uh, taken seriously and addressed until we get to the right solution. And uh, while a lot of the discussion here has been on the incremental steps towards 5G, we have heard some exciting, perhaps more fun discussion around some of these uh, long-range use cases. I, I know your former classmate, Dr. Chi Lin Yi from China Mobile, mm -hmm. uh, discussed the idea of autonomous robots sharing a, a cloud-based brain. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it's just, it, it's so wonderful to hear these sort of moonshot ideas. What about 5G and IoT really excites you? Mm -hmm. I think the, uh, the fact that it is enabling us with the quality of experience, in fact, that's the objective, with uh, basically we do not have one quality of service in mind. We do have different type of uh, quality of experience or quality of service for different applications. That's really important. And I think we do not have that in the current system. Mm -hmm. And that's, you, you mentioned SDN earlier as another right. primary point of this uh, program at Globecom, and, and that really, that's what will enable us to uh, spin up these customizable application-specific data pipes, right? The network slicing, I think it's yes, referred to. Yes, but again, that would be perhaps more on the backbone side. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, uh, of, of course, we are the SDN, in fact, is a, is a transition step towards something bigger. So eventually, it's not clear what technology, in fact, would be prevailing in that area. However, we are making progress towards something which has that sort of look. But the implementation may be eventually different in the SDN. And it's always a pleasure to, to come to Globecom and the other IEEE events. And I, I believe the two major shows for 2017 have been added to the calendar, correct? Uh, correct. Well, we have, uh, as always, we have ICC. Uh, taking place, uh, for example, in uh, around late spring, summer, and Globecom taking place in late fall, early winter. Mm -hmm. So next uh, ICC will be taking uh, in May, taking place in May in Paris, uh, in Palais de Congrès, and uh, Globecom 2017 will take place in uh, Singapore. So, uh, in fact, uh, Last evening, we had the ceremony of passing the uh, globe to the next event, to Paris, and of course, uh, inviting uh, Singapore to, in, to talk about it and ask people to submit papers and uh, basically invite people to go to Singapore. Well, we certainly look forward to the events next year. Dr. Bajan Jabari, thank yes. you so much thank for your Thank you time. so much for your time. Thank you.